beautiful souls. Welcome back to Art of Awakening. My name is Ona Christie, and this is the energy update video for March 2023. In this video, I'm going to share some Akashic guidance for this month of March. We'll hit on some of the important astrological dates and numerological dates in March 2023. And I'm going to be pulling a card or maybe a couple cards from this really special new deck. So watch for that at the end. And let's just jump right into the channeled message. And when I say channeled, I am personally, I'm not channeling any other being other than my own connection to the ethers, right? To the energies that are out there. So let's dive right in. As we approach the equinox, there are two forces at work. One is progressive and wishes to move forward. This current is open and strong and is a creative flow of energy. This current is showing up on the left-hand side. The other is resistant. This is on the right-hand side. It is cautious about moving forward and may attempt to restrain forward momentum. Neither is bad nor good, to, to, but when we're aware of these energies, we can use them to advantage. Ask for the appropriate energies to be applied as needed for highest good. Okay. And so I'm going to interject here. Typically, spiritually, when things appear on the left hand side, that represents feminine energies. Things appearing on the right hand side are going to represent more masculine energies. And right now, this month, I'm feeling that this, uh, this big current of manifesting energy that I'm feeling um, is, is just that. It's a, it's a feminine creative force that's coming in really, really super strongly right now. Um, and I'm going to be delving into that quite a bit more in the upcoming video that I've got on the Equinox. So if you haven't subscribed yet, this is a great time to do that. Um, okay, so We've got this feminine energy that's really wanting to manifest or have things flow, right? And then this masculine energy that's a little more resistant to that. And like I said, neither, neither bad nor good. These can both work to our advantage if we work with the positive aspects of, of both these currents of energy. It feels to me like the masculine's coming in as sort of a check and balance and to assist and guide and direct that feminine energy where needed. All right, let's go back into the message. Where you have clear desires towards manifesting in high vibration, the progressive current will carry you forward effortlessly, provided you trust deeply in it and hold full expectation that your wish is being fulfilled. Remember, if you watch my latest video on masculine and feminine energies, that the feminine energy is a manifesting energy, right? It's bringing things down to be embodied, right? And so when we hold that wish, that desire in our minds, that really helps that to happen. Okay, the restrictive energy will automatically ac activate when and where your actions and or clarity of vision are not fully aligned. This is a protective mechanism and will help ensure that anything that you do bring into being is in alignment with your highest purpose. Wherever your plans appear to be opposed, therefore, do not be frustrated. This does not mean that your desires are not valid or will not come to true fruition. Assuming that your plans and desires are truly in alignment with your highest good, this is an invitation, if you feel resistance, to relax into the flow. If you find it difficult to relax, you may need to pause, to take stock, to notice where misalignment may be showing up, and to correct these areas. Be especially aware of any energies of anxiety that may be distorting your field. These will trigger the resistive force. Should you find that this is happening, do what you need to do to clear these energies before you move forward. 
this may simply be a matter of stopping for a while to calm, still, and ground body and mind until you feel uplifted and balanced enough to resume activity. Or you may be required to sharpen your focus, clarify what it is that you really want and or don't want in your life before things start to flow again. Conversely, you may need to systematically observe where your energy feels blocked and then invite the progressive energy to help you work on active clearing of these areas. So they're saying basically either you're going to be called into stillness, right, in order to get over whatever blocks that you're feeling, right, or there may be some active clearing that you may need to do, right, some purging. And some examples of where to look for some of these energies that may be blocked, um, that you might look for emotional resistances or disturbances, look at clutter in the home, um, clutter in the digital files in your inbox, um, disorganized finances, disorganization of any kind that can really block energy. The need for physical movement, you may just need to move your body, right? Or there may be excess weight or baggage of any kind, either physically on your body or just stuff that you need to get rid of, okay? It could be emotional baggage. Um, could be digestive obstruction, it could be poor feng shui, any of these things, right? Spiritual, you know, negative entities, anything like that that might be clinging to you, um, great time to purge this. Okay, so let's look at some important dates for March 2023, and then we'll kind of summarize what we just heard before we go into the reading. March 7th, we have a full moon in Virgo, okay? So Virgo's this wonderful, wonderful <laughs> archetype for clearing, releasing, and especially uh, hygiene, right? Working with the physical body is perfect, of course, for spring cleaning, which is why it comes up at this time. This will be a great time to let go of your next round of physical, mental, and or spiritual baggage, as we just said, or attachments. This full moon will help. Right? So you might consider if you feel like there's things that you need to purge or purify um, using this full moon in order to assist with that process, right? Any kind of meditation, ritual, ceremony that you do around this full moon around forgiveness, letting go, um, anything like that will be really highly empowered. All right, so that's March 7th, March 14th, a week later, we have the peak of the Normid meteor shower. It's a relatively minor meteor shower, but it's this precursor to the annual meteor, larger meteor showers that we're gonna see in April, August, and October. So what I'm feeling around this, um, the spiritual meaning of meteor shower, you can look this up, of course, but a couple things that come to mind would be, um, kind of flashes of light or, or you know, just spiritual assistance being showered upon you. Um, it could be, uh, you know, meteors are often the meteor showers associated with like space dust, cosmic dust, um, and being burned up in the atmosphere. So again, there's that sense of purging, clearing in order to create energy, right, that we can use to illuminate our lives. Keep in mind that the right around the 14th is the peak of this time, and that anything that we're, any energies that we're working with or seeding into the etheric field right now will be echoed and amplified in April, August, and October of this year, right? So any kind of clearing, we may see repeated cycles, whatever we're working on now, um, especially if it's clearing work or bringing in, right, a receiving of blessings, then um, so just be kind of aware of what's happening and you may see repeats of this. Or if you did a lot of clearing right now in this month, it may be opening the way for receiving those blessings in those future months. Um, okay, so March 20th, we have the equinox um, that will be at 5.24 p.m. Eastern time. Watch again for my upcoming video on the equinox. There's huge energy around this, so don't miss that one. And again, if you haven't subbed, this is a good time. March 
21st, a new moon in Aries that occurs less than 24 hours from the equinox, powerful sign of new beginnings. And, and get this, it happens at 1.23 Eastern time on 3.21, right? So 1 to 3, 3 to 1. Um, I haven't even looked into the numerology of that, but it feels like it's significant, right? This, this flow, and there's a flow to it. Um, if you have any downloads on that particular numerological sequence, I'd love to see those in the, in the comments section below. Okay, and then finally, a few more important dates in March 2023. We have the 3-3-2023 on March 3rd, and on March 30th, the 3-30-2023, and these are numerological sequences combining the master builder number of 22 with a master teacher number of 33, okay? So this master builder number um, and master teacher in conjunction, they're happening throughout this decade, right, of the 2020s. When we have that 2233 happening in March, right? So you can see that this entire decade is humongous, huge, huge, huge building in something new, right? We all know we're moving into that age of Aquarius, into a whole new way of being. Um, and it's it's really coming forward like every March, this decade is like a, another great big push into that, that new age that we're going into. But in 2023, and um, last year, actually in 2022, we had a, a strengthening of the master builder, right, around um, this time, because we had that 3-3-2022. Now we've got the 3-3-2023, so it's emphasizing the teacher, right, um, in, in that relationship. Master teacher is coming forward. Okay, what does this mean? Well, just Feel into the power of your own inner teacher, your inner guru, right? But know that we've got everything that we need. You're going to be given as long as you can relax into it, right? Because you can hold yourself open, hold your heart open. And we're, we're really, what we're doing is you're calling in the Christ stream, the Christ impulse. I'll talk a lot about that in the next video. Um, but, and you don't have to be Christian. It has really, really, it's not it's not a religious thing. It's a, this is the direct connection between yourself and the creator spirit, right? Source, Godhead. Um, so we want to really call on that right now, and especially throughout this decade, always, but especially throughout this decade, this month is going to be a really, really powerful opportunity to really open and develop that connection. And the other thing that we want to, a couple other things that we want to be aware of around this idea of the master teacher is that everyone that comes in your field is, is here. We're all here to teach each other. And that even challenges and or challenging people, challenging situations, sometimes those are the very best teachers. So be looking for the lessons in everything. What can I learn from this? What lessons can I take away from this? no matter what it is, right? So being really the, the, the divine student. Um, all right, so these numbers, the 3-3-2023, of course, they hold space like bookends throughout the month of March. And um, these number vibrations really underscore the incredible power of this month, this time right now that we're in. So brace yourself. Um, also, there are three more dates, the, the March 2nd, 3-2, 2023, 3 2023, and 3 2023. These are also power dates that carry harmonics of these numbers. Okay, so, so to summarize, um, this is an incredibly powerful change of season energies right now. Okay, which means a lot of opportunity for cleansing and purification. And that's true whether you're in the Northern or Southern Hemisphere, okay? Um, in the Northern Hemisphere, you're gonna feel probably more gearing up for growth, for manifestation, um, you know, manifesting action. And in this, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it may feel more like a preparing for deep, deep introspection right? Um, either way, it's a great time for clearing. 
Every equinox has really powerful energies, but these this year are just over the top. And for reasons I'll explain in the equinox video. Um, all right, so get ready for some deep, deep uh, spring or fall cleaning. Um, and one more thing before we do the reading, if we read between the lines of all of this, we do have a lot, a lot of help. Okay, so these energies are like birthing contractions. It's like a giant portal opening. And it's really important to remember that we're not alone, right? Anytime you have portals opening to this huge extent, you're going to have, it's going to attract a lot of spiritual beings, okay? And we know that there's a lot of benevolent spiritual assistance for us, right? Um, so you can call on your star family, you can call on your angels, you can call on your ascended masters, masters whether it's Jesus or Buddha or Kuan Yin or um, I'm getting white buffalo calf woman, whoever it is, right, that you resonate with, your, you know, your own personal spirit team, they're all there to assist. So, and we just need to remember to ask, right? Again, the whales, if you listen to my solstice, they're still with us very much so. Um, it, there's just so, so much support. We can support each other as well. Okay, so, and speaking of supporting each other, um, if you are catching this video right away, my next Lightworkers Cafe free gathering for star seeds is going to be on February 22nd, and that's going to be all about spiritual protection. So I'll put the information to join that in the um, description box below. All right, so let's go into the reading for this month and i am so so excited to introduce this deck um this is the b sisterhood oracle and if you've been following me for a while you may remember that i've been every once in a while i'll mention this i was originally going to be the only artist on this deck but somewhere along that line I really got the message strong from B Spirit. It's like, you're not meant to be the only artist on this. And, and so we opened it up and there's a whole group of artists that are um, have contributed to this deck. And right now this is a prototype deck. So it's like the back will look like this. And these are the cards. Um, but it's this is just when I had to actually cut these, these cards individually out. There's going to be a Kickstarter. Um, we're expecting that to launch sometime later this spring, tentatively around Beltane, uh, early May. But um, if you're interested in um, getting updates around this deck and all the details on when it will be available, just go to BeeSisterHoodOracle.com. I'll leave the link in the description below. And uh, you can just sign up to receive updates. I'll be giving updates on this as well. Okay, so right now there is not even a guidebook yet. Uh, we're working on the guidebook, but um, I just couldn't wait to bring these cards out. It just felt so resonant with all this beautiful feminine uh, manifesting energy to have the bees with us. And so we're gonna, I'm just gonna ask for highest and best guidance, just tuning into the beautiful spirit of bee, the spirit of cooperation and pollination and fertilization and divine feminine buzz, right? And calling on Sister B to support us with a message of support here. Let's see what's going to come forward. And the card that's coming forward. Oh, I love it. Um, this was actually the last card. And it's number 48 out of 48 cards. And it is Hum. And I just love this because it really describes um, that, like, on the positive polarity of these energies that I'm feeling, there's this, just this gathering, this big hum starting up that you can just really feel the very very uh resonant energy right okay so this is the energy of the new earth that we're really starting that to the it's powerfully gathering right um when a beehive swarms the whole hive will start to hum before they all take off for the new 
place. So that feels like that's where we're at. I will do a video on the swarm coming up here, but uh, for now, just this wonderful hum. And hum also just reminds us to feel into the vibration. And there's something really, really protective about the act of humming, right? That it, it, um, if you've ever done toning work, right, where you just hold the tone, there's also a breath work where you, it's like a bumblebee hum, right, that you can do. These practices are extremely, extremely protective, and they will also very much raise your vibration because that's the really most important thing right now to remember. Remember that where there's a lot of purging, there it may feel very chaotic, it may feel difficult, it may feel challenging, whether or not you're feeling those challenging energies yourself or hearing it all around you, right? There may be others who are going through difficult times. We come back into that hum vibration, right? Just really tune into the hum of a beehive when it's working together, right? Uh, a, a good, happy hive. And that will really protect your field. It's like, and even the act of humming creates this incredibly strong vibration around you that will act as a shield, as well as helping to break up and purge. It can really assist in this process of purification. If you've got anything to clear out of your system, clear out of your aura, clear away, working with this vibration of the hum, you can actually meditate like a big breath and or the primal ohm. It's ohm hear that hum right and it really brings us down grounds us into the world in a way that and it helps us to radiate that energy out so that anything that might be trying to drag us down it just can't hold up right to to that kind of energy all righty so thank you for sticking with me for so long uh, there's a lot of energy here in this month enjoy and I just have one request of you. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like because that really helps with the algorithm, get it out to more people. If you feel inspired, do feel free to share this video. If you feel like it may be helpful, um, either on your social feed or to individuals that you feel might benefit. And always remember, you were born to be free.